Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. Today I'm gonna to show you how to replace the valve cover on this 2011 Ford Explorer. If you need parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1aauto.com. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. We're gonna disconnect the negative post on the battery. The negative terminal. Once it's loose, wiggle it back and forth, and slide it off, set it aside. The air filter box is right here. I'm gonna disconnect this mass airflow sensor. There's a little button underneath here that unlocks it. Just push that button, release the lock. There's a wire that's connected right here to the box. You can pull up on this right there or you can use a little screwdriver and get underneath there and pry it up. I'm gonna loosen up this worm clamp right here. Use a straight blade screwdriver. I'm gonna slide this snorkel back a little bit. And there's a hook right here, a latch, and then one right here. Those two, and then I'll slide this up. And underneath here is the air filter. This air filter is actually covered in oil. Um, there's a problem with this vehicle. It's actually in the PCV system, which is in part of the valve cover in this vehicle. What's happening is oil is going through this tube here and coming back into the intake. And it's going into the throttle body, but also it's draining into the air filter. So at this point, we need to address that issue. Um, it's not something you wanna just take this dirty air filter out and put a new air filter in it because it's gonna end up full of oil again. So, and this air filter really doesn't look that bad, so it was probably replaced recently. But, um, so we're gonna address that issue and then we'll put a new air filter in it. So I'll set this air box aside. I'm going to take the filler cap off right here, listen it to the left. This foam piece comes up here. We're going to go around this cover right here, pull this up like that. There is a little retainer over here, I'm going to loosen this up, pull that up, and then there's over here, there's a little push pin. You use a trim tool, pull this off. Pull that pin out. And we'll pull this cover off and set it aside. All right, I'm gonna take this tube off right here. Just push this little lock and then slide this out. And then you can slide it out over here. Take that off. Take my straight head screwdriver, loosen up this worm clamp back here. Pull this off and disconnect this hose right here. Set this aside. Now I'm gonna disconnect these electrical connectors for the coils. I'm gonna take my straight head screwdriver, slide this lock up like that, and then push down on the retainer and slide it out. I'm gonna do the same for the other ones. Now I'm gonna take the coil out. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket, extension and a ratchet. Take this bolt out, pull that bolt out, and I can grab the coil, slide it straight up. I'm gonna disconnect these electrical connectors right here. These are for the cam sensors. There's a little push button right here to unlock it. A little right there, 
and then same with this one. Push the button. And pull it up, just like that. Move those out of the way. I'm going to use a little pry tool underneath here. You can use a screwdriver, screwdriver or a um, trim tool. Pry up there. Right here, there's a little push lock, push retainer. Slide that out. Over here, this little retainer that's holding it in. Pull that off the stud. Over here. Slide that up. Right here, there's one. Slide that up. Underneath this connector here. Oops. Slide that up. Now I'll disconnect this connector here. Push down on the lock, slide it out. Oh, there's another retainer over here. Slide that up. Right here. Oh, this one broke. That's okay. And right here. There's a wire right here. This one's kind of hard to get to. Oh. Oh, that broke right there. It's okay. Oh, another retainer right here. Pull that off. All right. All right, so this wire is kind of in our way. It goes down in front of the engine, goes down to a knock sensor. So instead of going down underneath the vehicle and disconnecting that, I'm gonna disconnect the fuel injectors and then these two ground wires right here, and then we can fold the harness over that way. So let's squeeze this little tab here, disconnect that fuel injector. Then this fuel injector and this one. Now I'll take an eight millimeter socket and take this bolt out here. Pull that bolt out and pull this off. This may be stuck on there a little bit. So I'll just pull it off. Now we'll pull this, this ground off. Use that eight millimeter socket and a ratchet. I just had to hold this bracket a little bit. It was in there pretty good. Pull that bolt out. Slide this ground this way. And just slide this wiring harness out of our way. Just like that. Now I'm gonna loosen up all these bolts. Uh, some of them have studs on them. I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter deep socket and uh, extension and a ratchet. 
Okay, and these should be caged bolts, so they're gonna stay with the valve cover. So I don't have to worry about where the studded ones go. Although we're replacing the valve cover anyway. All right, so these, there's 11 bolts all around here. So we're gonna loosen these all up. All right, now that those are all loosened, we can, uh, we're gonna pry this up a little bit. You can grab it by with your fingers and see if you can pull. Might have to get it in there. And just use a little tool to help get, under, get underneath here. You can use a screwdriver. I'm just using a trim tool. It's stuck on there pretty good. If it's, if it's taking a lot of effort to pull it off, just double check, make sure you got all your bolts out. And looks like we got all ours. It's just been on there for a while, so it's kind of difficult to remove. careful of these cam sensors. Loosened a little bit more. Oh, pull the dipstick out. Set that aside. And pull the valve cover up. We have to remove this adapter from the old valve cover. On the back side, you're going to take a pick. There's a little slot right here. Little like, it's like a lock. I'll show you better when it's out, but I'm gonna take the pick. Sometimes these break. I need to pull this out a little bit. Unlock it. Pull it out. The little lock is right there. There's the little lock. You just take the pick and then just pry it out a little bit. And then you can unlock this. All right, I'm gonna take a razor blade. I'm just gonna clean up some of the RTV gasket. There's just two, two little spots that they put that RTV. Right here and then also down here. rag and some brake parts cleaner. I'm just gonna clean all the way around. Be careful not to get any of the sand into the engine. Just wipe it all the way around. Just take a little more brake parts cleaner and then clean up 
these VCT solenoids. They're the variable camshaft solenoids. And those look pretty good. Now we're gonna get our new cover ready to install. This is an updated cover, so it has different holes in it, or this is sealed differently than the original one, so it should not suck up oil through that tube. That would be in that position right there. So we'll have to transfer that over from the old one. And I'm gonna take some RTV. I'm just gonna put it, there's two little like marks on there and there. That's where it was on the other one. So we'll just put about an inch of RTV, inch or two, right there and right there. We can take our cover, slide it into position. sure all the wires are clear. Looks pretty good. Lightly put a little bit of pressure. On here. Get these bolts started. I'm gonna start tightening these down a little bit. I'm not gonna torque them yet, but just get them snug with a um, 10 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet. All right, so there is a torque sequence. We're gonna torque these to 89 foot-pounds. Uh, number one, we're starting back here, 89 foot-pounds. Number two is down here. Number three, over here. Number four is over here. Normally you start from the inside out. This one seems like it goes from the outside in. So number four, number five is right here. Number six goes to the middle. Right here. Number seven, right here. Number eight is right here. Number nine, right here. Number 10, right here. And number 11, last one in the front. All right, now we're gonna take this wiring harness. It's gonna go over here. Slide this on this stud. This one can go on this stud. This one right here. Start plugging these connectors in. Those are for the fuel injection, fuel injectors. This can go on this stud. These little wire retainers can slide back in to position. Right there, right there. This is for the variable valve timing. Click the white one to the white sensor. That's the intake sensor. This one's the exhaust sensor. I mean, uh, solenoid. And slide this through here. Push that wire retainer in. Put 
I'm gonna reattach this ground to the engine. I'm gonna use this eight millimeter bolt. I'm gonna get it started first and then use an eight millimeter socket ratchet and an extension. Snug it down. And we're gonna reattach this ground right here. Use this bolt and our socket, extension, and ratchet. Snug that down. Now we're gonna line the slots up with the little nubs in the valve cover. And that's locked in place. I'm just gonna put this oil cap on so I don't get any dust or dirt into the engine. I'm gonna take some compressed air. Um, even though these are sealed up with the coil packs, um, there is still a little bit of dirt in there. So I just wanna blow out these spark plug tubes. All right, I'm gonna install the coils. Slide it down. We're gonna take the eight millimeter bolt. Get that started. Make sure it's all the way down. We'll take a eight millimeter socket, extension and ratchet. Just gonna snug this down and then I'm gonna torque it. I'm going to use a torque wrench and torque this to 62 inch pounds. Make sure you're on inch pounds and not foot pounds. That's good. I'll do the same for the other ones. With those all torqued down, now we can reconnect the electrical connectors. Just slide this on clip it in place and then push down on the lock. Do the same for the other ones. Now we're gonna reconnect this O2 sensor wire. Just plug this in here, lock it in place, and then this is gonna get secured right there. We need to transfer this fitting over to the new valve cover. Um, I can use a 1 and 1 16th wrench on this, or I can use a 1 and 1 16th socket and a ratchet. Just twist this off and pull it out. Just clean this O-ring up a little bit. Just wipe this down with a rag. Looks pretty good. Now we're gonna Line this up right here, twist it on, and not very much torque, just get it on there, and it's good. Okay, now we're going to take this dip stick, slide it back in there, just like that. Does this go under here? You can pause for it. I'm looking in there, seeing if there's any oil. It looks pretty good. I don't see any oil in there. All right. I'm just gonna take a little brake parts cleaner and clean out this tube. Just make sure it get all the oil out, if there was any oil in there. That's good. Now I'm gonna reinstall this tube right here, lock it in place. 
this point, I can put this engine cover back on. I gotta take this cap off first. And this is gonna slide over here like that. I can secure this cover down right here. Just twist that down. The other side just had a push retainer. So I'll just push that down. Just like that. All right, so before we go any further, there's a lot of oil. Oil in this snorkel tube. So we want to get some of that out, or most of it out. So we're going to just have a drain pan here. Just gonna spray some brake cleaner, brake parts cleaner in the tube. We're gonna tip it up, let it drain out. I'm gonna take a rag, just try to clean some of this out. Some of it gets stuck in the like, bellows of this boot. So just try to wipe it out the best you can. As long as it's not puddled up really bad, then it'll be okay. You just don't want a puddle of oil. You know? And then try to tip it back and forth because some of the oil could get stuck in these chambers. Flip it around. Try to get in there the best you can. That looks pretty good. All right, set that aside. Now for the air filter box, there's a bunch of oil here. We don't want to get any brake parts cleaner on this mass airflow sensor. So I'm going to use a T20 socket and a ratchet. Take these two torx bolts out, torx screws out. Set this aside. Now we'll take some brake parts cleaner, clean out this air box. Underneath. We'll take a rag and wipe it all up. Get as much off as possible. Be good to go. All right, then we're going to take our mass airflow. This is nice and clean. I didn't have to clean this at all. So we can slide this back in. If you forget which way you took it out, there is a little flow area on the sensor. Um, so you want that flow going away from the air filter. Torx bit, a T20, and snug these up. Just snug, not too tight. It is in plastic. I'm gonna reinstall this snorkel. Slide this into position. Slide this hose on right here. And then this hose goes right here. Lock it in place. Take a screwdriver, straight blade screwdriver. Tighten up this worm clamp. Snug. Make sure, make sure the snorkel's on there good. This air filter box has a lot of sand and some debris in it, so I'm gonna vacuum it out with a vacuum. Now there's still some oil around the outside, so I'm going to take some brake parts cleaner and just clean this up. 
and then wipe it with a rag. I'm going to install a new air filter now that all the oil is cleaned out. Slide this down, slide the box down. I'm going to install these clips over here, lock it in place, and same with the other one. Lock it in place, take this connector, slide it on the mass airflow, and then this retainer that holds the wire down, push that down there. I'll take a straight blade screwdriver, just tighten down this worm clamp. Make sure it's snug. Reinstall this oil filter cap. Reconnect the battery negative cable. Take my 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. I'm just gonna snug this up. Make sure it's nice and tight. Not too tight though, you don't wanna break the clamp. And that's good and tight. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.